بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر فواد حمید رائے اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دس سیشن آن میٹ ہائیجین فش ہائیجین اینڈ سلاٹر ہاؤسز بائی دا اینڈ آف دا سیشن دا پارٹیسپینٹس شوڈ انڈرسٹینڈ واٹ کانسٹیٹیوٹس میٹ ہائیجین واٹ از فش ہائیجین اینڈ فائنلی ویل بی ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ سلاٹر ہاؤسز and uh, uh, what are the basic sanitation measures they should undertake uh, what is anti mortem inspection of meat and post mortem inspection of meat as far as uh, meat hygiene uh, is concerned uh, the term meat uh, includes various tissues of animal origin and uh, Meat hygiene is the creation of conditions and implementation of measures necessary to ensure the safety and stability of meat at all stages of the meat production chain. Effective hygiene control is vital to avoid the adverse human health and economic consequences of unsuitable meat and meat related illnesses. When we talk about meat hygiene There are three principles of meat hygiene which are crucial for meat processing operations. The first is prevention. Prevention of microbial contamination by adopting proper cleaning and sanitation practices. The second is minimization. Minimization of microbial growth in meat products by storing them uh, at a low temperature. Then finally the third principle is elimination of risk, a reduction or elimination of the risk of microbial contamination by applying suitable heat treatment and packaging uh, systems at the final processing stage. And finally when the meat is ready or has been packed and is being transported, uh, it is very important that a proper cold chain is maintained. Moving further uh, regarding meat hygiene, uh, unwholesome meat is not to be consumed and why do we uh, focus on meat hygiene is to prevent the spread of diseases if the animal which has been, uh, 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 whose flesh is being utilized for eating uh, has some disease. So uh, the diseases as far as the diseases are concerned. Uh, meat can spread tapeworm, uh, may have tapeworm infestations. Uh, even during the uh, uh, anti-mortem examination, these things can be determined. Uh, tapeworm infestations include Tinea solium, Tinea saginata, uh, Trichinella spiralis, uh, Fasciola uh, hepatica, and then there are some bacterial infections as well. Uh, which include anthrax, actinomycosis, tuberculosis and food, food poisoning. All these diseases can uh, be transmitted through uh, sick animals which have been uh, slaughtered in the slaughterhouses. Well, when it comes to uh, the slaughterhouses, meat inspection uh, is one of the primary uh, objectives of the quality assurance system uh, in a slaughterhouse. Uh, and uh, you can see in this picture uh, that uh, there is a quality assurance guy uh, who is moving around and checking all the meat which is there in the slaughterhouse. Uh, another thing about meat inspection is that uh, animals intended for slaughter are subjected to proper anti-mortem and post-mortem inspection by qualified veterinary staff. So these are veterinary staff uh, uh, which uh, uh, examine, do the anti-mortem and post-mortem inspection of meat. Well, uh, talking about the anti-mortem inspection. The principal causes of anti-mortem uh, rejection of animals are 
uh, if the uh, animals are very weak they are exhausted uh, uh, they are pregnant uh, if they uh, if we talk about sheep they have sheep pox uh, uh, if uh, we talk about other uh, uh, cattle which are being uh, uh, used for uh, meat uh, if they have um, a foot root disease foot rot disease they have ectinomycosis they have brucellosis they have febrile conditions uh, uh, diarrhea and other diseases of an infectious nature rendering meat unfit for human consumption and the main causes uh, 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 as far as the anti you can see in this uh, slide uh, in the anti mortem inspection uh, the animals are being examined and uh, one of the most important uh, things as far as uh, anti mortem inspection is concerned uh, the animals are uh, examined both during motion and during uh, resting stage when they are alive so that uh, the the inspector can uh, assess if the animal is uh, fit for uh, human consumption or not and anti mortem examination of meat animal is of prime importance from public health point of view as well uh, it is uh, the initial step of detection of any sign of disease distress injury which helps in taking appropriate decision before slaughter of an animal and it should be done properly and systematically by qualified and exp uh, experienced veterinarians uh, which will in turn help in maintaining high standards of meat quality over here also you can see uh, both uh, 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 poultry as well as uh, uh, sheep and uh, uh, cow or buffalo meat and uh, some of the major objectives of anti mortem inspection uh, include to screen all animals destined to slaughter uh, and to ascertain that they are healthy to ensure that animals are properly rested and that proper clinical information which will assist in the disease diagnosis and ju judgment is obtained and is available so once the anti mortem inspection uh, has been done uh, then during uh, uh, when uh, the meat is, uh, 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 is being prepared uh we go for the post mortem inspections and uh, the main causes of the post mortem rejection are uh, 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 certain diseases like uh, liver fluke abscesses uh, uh, sarcositis uh, uh, hereditary disease septicemia pancreatic and nodular infections of the liver and lungs tuberculosis um, and so on and so forth and the characteristics of good meat are that it should be neither pale pink nor deep purple tint uh, firm and elastic to touch should not be uh, slimy and have an agreeable odor and in the post mortem inspection uh, when it is being done it should provide necessary information for the scientific evaluation of pathological lesions pertinent to the wholesomeness of the meat and uh, uh, the different steps involved are viewing in cn palpation olfaction uh, and these are all uh, have been translated into special techniques and uh, those uh, veterinarians who are trained uh, for inspections are well versed with these viewing in cn palpation and olfaction techniques and then classifying the lesions into one of the two major categories acute or chronic and this is how uh, 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 it is a certain whether the meat is uh, uh, fit for human consumption or not as far as the uh, post mortem inspections are concerned it also covers the inspection of the carcasses uh, and parts of meat and poultry used for human food it takes place after anti mortem inspection and after the animal or poultry has been slaughtered thus the term post mortem means after death in latin you can see in these slides uh, um, i have uh, pictorially uh, a kind of uh, 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 presented material in front of you so that you can uh, easily comprehend that uh, uh, how this thing is done 
before i discuss fish hygiene i will like to discuss slaughter houses with you and at the end i will discuss fish hygiene as far as uh, slaughter houses are concerned slaughter houses are the place where animals whose flesh is intended for human consumption uh, are slaughtered or killed and uh, the uh, hygiene of uh, uh, such a place is of paramount importance to prevent the contamination of meat during the process of dressing um, and the uh, minimum standards for slaughter houses uh, uh, have been uh, suggested by different public health acts in different countries and the salient features of the slaughter house should include uh, the location uh, as far as the location is concerned it should preferably be away from residential areas then uh, is the structure and the floors and walls up to 3 feet should be impervious and easy to clean uh, the third is disposal of wastes uh, blood offal etc should not be discharged uh, into public sewers but should be collected separately and then disposed of through a proper uh, uh, waste management system and i would suggest that it should be uh, A, a biomedical waste management system all this material should not go into the general waste then the fourth is water supply uh, and it should be independent adequate and continuous so that proper cleanliness is maintained in the premises the fifth is examination of animals uh, and anti mortem and post mortem examination uh, should be arranged animals uh, or meat found unfit for human consumption should be destroyed or denatured uh, then the sixth is storage of meat which is uh, also very very important and meat should be stored in fly proof and rat proof rooms for overnight storage the temperature of the room should uh, uh, should be maintained below 5 degree centigrade and as i uh, discussed with you earlier even after this meat uh, has been packed and is being sent to retail outlets or to um, uh, food facilities where it will be consumed um, uh, it should uh, a proper cold chain should be maintained the transportation of meat uh, uh, is the seventh component and meat shall be transported by fly fly proof covered vans um, in which proper temperature is maintained and finally uh, there are miscellaneous steps uh, but animals other than those to be slaughtered should not be allowed inside the shed uh, of uh, those animals which are to be slaughtered so i i think i have given you a pretty good idea as far as the slaughter houses are concerned and uh, uh, what are the different salient features as far as slaughter houses are concerned just revising i have discussed with you location uh the structure disposal of waste water supply examination of animal storage of meat temperature of meat uh and um, uh, 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 i've uh, highlighted that those animals which are not to be slaughtered should not be allowed in the shed uh, where the slaughtered animals uh, are stationed for a while well as far as uh, quality assurance of meat is concerned uh, two useful schemes are usually adopted at various levels of meat uh, 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 production uh, uh, and control uh, uh, during production and control measures uh, these are good hygienic practices and hazard uh, analysis critical control point you can see in this uh, picture which i have shared in this slide that i have uh, explained this hazard analysis critical control point uh, scheme uh, of quality assurance of meat and you can go through it a little bit about the punjab uh, food authority act 2012 uh, its preamble uh, 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 says that where uh, as it is expedient to protect public health to provide for the safety and standards of food to establish the punjab food authority and for other connected matters so this uh, uh, food authority uh, uh, focuses on provision of wholesome meat uh, uh, meat which is fit for human consumption and it all uh, not only focuses on meat it uh, focuses on a variety of food stuffs and in abattoirs uh, slaughterhouses are also called abattoirs uh, we need to prevent microbial meat spoilage or prevent food poisoning through meat 
and uh, the, the Punjab Food Authority provides regulations for unhygienic or unsanitary conditions and unsafe food. And there are different fines. Um, and uh, 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 I'll just uh, give you uh, 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 a flavor of this uh, Punjab Food Authority uh, Act. Um, a proper license is required for all these food facilities for the slaughterhouses and anyone who does not have uh, a license uh, can be uh, imprisoned up to uh, one year uh, and the minimum is three days and can be fined up to around 500,000 and the minimum is uh, fine is 10,000. So you can well imagine that they are focusing. You can see their logo over here in this slide and they have special vehicles. They also go and check for the other foodstuffs, even the milk which is coming into the city. I've discussed that with you in uh, uh, some of my previous sessions. So uh, uh, by now I have discussed with you uh, meat hygiene and I've also discussed with you uh, about slaughterhouses. And finally, uh, I will highlight a little bit about fish hygiene. And uh, as far as fish hygiene is concerned, a, a, a fish deteriorates or loses its freshness because of uh, 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 autolysis, which sets in after death and because of the bacteria which they uh, become infected with. And stale fish should be condemned. And the signs, um, I will discuss the signs of uh, fresh fish with you in my next slide. And it is important that uh, 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 we thoroughly wash seafood in fresh tap water prior, for, uh, prior to cooking to rinse away bacteria and thoroughly wash and disinfect uh, uh, cooking implements, utensils used with seafood to prevent secondary contamination and uh, use different cutting boards for seafood and other foods. So uh, fish or seafood should not be cut on the same cutting boards uh, as um, uh, uh, it is uh, wheel, beef uh, or mutton uh, or poultry or vegetables uh, and other foodstuffs. And in this slide, uh, uh, I have also given you a, a visual uh, uh, tour um, of uh, uh, a facility where uh, proper fish hygiene is being maintained and uh, have also shown you, shown you the different steps through which this uh, fish quality assurance is done, which is to be consumed by humans. Uh, as far as uh, fresh fish are concerned, uh, the signs of fresh fish are that it is in a state of stiffness of rigor mortis. It smells fresh and mild, uh, mildly uh, briny. Uh, the gills are bright red and uh, the eyes are clear and prominent and skin and scales are metallic-like. So, if you see all these things present in a fish which you are buying from the market uh, uh, or which has been brought to home and you are the one who is going to cook it, so uh, make sure that it is fresh fish. Uh, if it is not fresh fish, then it should not be consumed. A little bit about the diseases spread by fish. The fish are intermediate host of tapeworm. Uh, a virus of hepatitis A may be concentrated in shellfish such, such as oysters. Fish may carry uh, uh, Vibrio, Parahemolyticus, Salmonella, Clostridium, uh, uh, botulinum uh, type E and other organisms which may give rise uh, to fish poisoning. So one has to be very very careful while consuming fish. And uh, uh, I would also like to highlight tin fish over here. Um, uh, when called upon to inspect tin fish or meat or uh, any food, uh, 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 I would suggest that uh, uh, one should note uh, that the tin must be new and clean without leakages or rusting. There should be no evidence of having been tampered with such as uh, sealed openings. Uh, on opening the tin, the content should not be blown out which indicates decomposition. So with this, uh, I end today's session. Um, uh, uh, and I, uh, while concluding, I would say that cleanliness is uh, half of the faith and uh, uh, we should always consider, uh, consider cleanliness 
even in our lives in our homes in our uh, working places and especially as far as where our food is uh, processed uh, in our uh, retail outlets in our departmental stores in our stores where food is stored um, and while concluding i will say that food hygiene is of prime importance for good health of human beings who consume it always consume fresh meat and fish uh, or that which has been properly stored and cleanliness and following of proper anti mortem uh, and post mortem inspections in slaughter houses abattoirs is of prime importance and uh, i thank you all uh, with the message today's message is to ensure good health eat lightly breathe deeply live moderately cultivate cheerfulness and maintain an interest in life thank you very much ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, i wish you uh, have a, a good day and uh, take care allah hafiz